Hello everyone, this is Kenny Brony from Cambridge Tech and welcome back. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is specifically SNG207 Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So if you have been following along, we have this particular structure over here and we have ordered this, I mean, more or less like a structure or the chapters of a book. So currently we are on chapter 16 where we are discussing loops, Python loops. And in the first part of the video, we looked at the for loop. In this part of the video, we are going to look at the while loop. So I'm going to collapse this so that we have a wider view over here. And now let's start with the while loops. All right, so these while loops, unlike the for loops, they are going to run until a certain condition is met. So this is what the while loop is going to look like. Now let's start off by declaring a variable x and x is equal to zero. So I'm going to say while x for instance is less than let's say 10. i'd want to print out x so the whole logic is if we are to for instance write the truth set okay for this expression x is less than 10 for all row numbers no sorry for all counting numbers then it is actually going to start from zero one two three four five sorry let me just put it um, a comment over here all the way to nine because this is going to be the truth set so x is like that x is a set that contains these numbers we are engineers so we should learn or know how some of these things work so this is going to be the truth set for this particular um, expression so we are starting from zero so if or while x is less than 10 in which case 0 is less than 10 then i would want you to print x so it's going to print until this particular condition is met and now in order to run this we need to do an increment over here so over here we do x and we can do x plus equal to 1 so we are incrementing by one so upon the first iteration then you increment by one to the next iteration and so on and so forth but at the end of the day we are printing out x so this is going to yield something like this when i run this we definitely see from zero to nine over here good now currently based on the logic we have over here this is almost like using the range method to print and passing in 10 over there but there are other important things we can do so for instance if we increase this by two so we are doing an increment by two then it is going to have that step which is going to be similar to the range and passing in the step so now when i run this we do get zero then the step will jump to two then another step will jump to three another step and we can do same for instance uh, doing a step of three and that's exactly what we see over here good but in most cases or in most practical cases we are going to see this with a step of one and that's what we see over here now this is okay but now let's look at something over here and once again let me just comment these ones out and we are looking at more while loops so let's say we have a program and we want to give a user the opportunity to enter a number and we would want to count the number of iterations we get now let's start declaring some variables and i'm going to explain everything over here so i'm going to declare a variable called limit and limit is going to be three and i'm going to have another variable i'm going to call count and count is going to start from zero so i'm going to have in a while loop over here so i'm going to say while count is less than limit At this point i just want to print the number of iterations we have so over here let's declare a variable called data and data is going to accept an input so we use the input method over here and i'm going to say enter um, your data this way so i say enter your data and this is what i want to do i just want to count the number of times the user has entered data so maybe count one so i'm going to just bring out a print statement over here and i'm going to wrap everything up in a formatted string so i'm going to have something like this and i'm going to say iteration 
iteration count so i'm going to say iteration count and inside of this placeholder i can now pass in count over here because upon the first iteration the count is going to be zero upon the second iteration is going to be one and it moves on and on and the next thing i would want to do is i want to definitely do count plus one over here so now when i run this program you see it's entire data so for instance the first data is ken i press enter and it says that iteration count is zero because the counting starts from zero now i type in um bruni and i press enter now you can see that the iteration count is one and i type in ug and when i press enter the iteration count is now two at the end of the day the loop ran three times and that's the limit we specified over here if i'm to change this limit to for instance five save this and i'll run this let's see the first one i type in ken so this is count zero i type in brony this now becomes count one i type in ug this counts three but then based on the indexing you could see that we have two over here now i type in c pen this is going to be count three and based on the indexing i mean if you have to count this is actually the fourth iteration now i type in change down after running this loop five times it stops remember the counting started from zero we got to one two three four so that's the limit we specified over here. i just want to revert back to three but this is what i want to show you that the iteration will count one after the other based on the count increment we have over here and the parameter we have over here is incremented by one good now let's use this same principle in building a more advanced or sophisticated application and this is what i want us to do i want us to have a program where we ask the user to type in for instance a number now if the user types in the number we tell the user that okay you've typed in the number you are i mean you are okay but then if the user types in something which is not a number then we give the user an opportunity to correct him or herself three times if the user exceed that number then at least we have been able to do our part so this is how we go about it so let's let me just clear this so i'm going to say or i'm going to change this to number all right so the data is going to read something like entire number and over here i'm just going to put out something we've done in the past we want to check if actually what was inputted is a number so i'm going to say if data dot is numeric remember that the dot is numeric method we've used it in the past and you say that a string is numeric if all characters in the string are numeric and at least one one character is a string so i'm going to say if it is a numeric then i'd want to print out an interesting statement over here. i'm going to use a formatted string and i'm going to say the data you have over here which is a number is numeric now if the number is numeric what do i want to do i just want to break it's as simple as that so now let me save this so now i run this entire number if i type in 20 20 is numeric so it says 20 is numeric then the code breaks or the execution is done however if i press on this and type in let's say ken ken is not numeric so the loop remember we are still giving our user three chances so the loop runs again and i'll type in brony which is not numeric i run it again it gives me another chance in which case this is going to be the last chance and now when i type in let's say ug and press enter it gives me another chance i type in c pen it gives me countless chances because it is not seeing what it is supposed to see and that's simply because let me just collapse this so i'll do a control c in the terminal over here to break this code so it says keyboard interrupt good and this is happening because we are not telling our code how the increment should go so we are going to say increment which is the count plus equal to one so that it knows that okay once you count and increment it by one 
and you hit this limit at least break the code for me so now let me see what we get so now when i run this once again let's type in ken this is the first iteration we type in brony second iteration and we expect to see this as our last iteration so when i press you i mean when i type in ug and press enter now the code breaks because now we have specified the counts over here but we want a situation where if this is actually what is happening i mean if the number is numeric then it breaks but then else we want to print out or we want to tell the user that well you are not doing something right so try and correct yourself so what i can do is i can do something like print and i'd want to put out some say um i would want to put out something like wrong input then i'll use a backslash and do an n over here to get a new line and i'm going to say enter a numeric value or number whichever way you want to put it so now when i save this and run this we have entire number i type in ken and now it says wrong input enter a numeric value because that's the logic i have over here and now i see that okay there's a prompt i type in 90 and it says that 90 is numeric so the code breaks good now let's run this code once again entire number i type in my name ken it says wrong input enter a numeric value i type in brony it says wrong input enter a numeric value and i type in ken again and it says wrong input enter a numeric value now i want an instance where if i get to the last try because it is counting from zero one two in which case three iterations so i want a situation where when it gets to the last try i mean it gives me a prompt that this is your last chance make sure you enter a numeric number so in order to do that this is how we have to go about this so we are going to say if count is less than one and we know where our count starts from it starts from zero so if it is less than one then you print this then all that we need to do l if the count is now equal to one now this is what i want you to print out i want you to print something like this last try so now let's save this and run this code and see now when i run this i type in ken it tells me wrong input enter numeric value i type in brony now this time around it tells me last try and if i enter ken again the code breaks because we've counted up to three times and it is giving me the prompt that this is a last try now let's run the code again if i enter a number 20 the code breaks it says that 20 is numeric all right so this is going to be um, a very simple but then interesting application and like i said as we move along we are going to see how some of these work in we building very interesting programs so this is going to be the end of this particular video like i said other examples will come along the line and based on the knowledge we are getting so far in subsequent videos we are going to kind of aggregate on the knowledge that we already have so currently you see that we are dealing with loops but then we are bringing some if else statements over here that's because we've covered if else statements in previous videos and when we get to functions and classes some of these things are also going to play a very critical role now one of the use cases of while loops so when you are building games you want the game to run an infinite loop but then if let's say you are playing a mario game okay let me give you like the brain behind some of these games or the logic behind some of these games if you are playing a mario game and let's say um you touch a fire so the game is going to run an infinite loop but if you touch a fire then for instance you die or you lose your life for which reason you have to restart again so these are some of the ways we implement our loops so this is going to be the end of this video now you find value out of these videos i'm putting out over here kindly support my work by subscribing to the cambro tech channel also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye and catch you in the next video